Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for the, the beautiful thoughts in the chat of gratefulness. So inspirational. So many of you know me. My name is Yvette Santiago, and I am the associate with the Office of Public-Private Partnerships. And this is the last of a three-part series focused on DEI and EEO agency plans. So we're focused on building an age-inclusive New York City. And this session, this session is focused on workplace and community, DEI and EEO section four. So we're squeezing in this last session as a wrap up and offering of a space to exchange ideas on developing age inclusive strategies and equitable workplaces. And I know it's Monday, and I know it's warm outside, so I appreciate each and every one of you that have shown up right now. Some of you are facing busy starts of the week. Um, it's also the end of the month approaching. I don't know how this impacts your work, may be very stressful, but I just wanna take a moment to release the beginning of the day, take a moment to be present for this session today. So I'm gonna do just a quick breath, inhale. And exhale. So here we are. I also like to encourage you to help create a safe space for us here, a space where your ideas, your questions, your difference of opinion and feedback are welcomed and valued. And if you're in alignment, why don't you type something in the chat? maybe choose a, a reaction, a thumbs up, a heart, um, something that shows up on the screen in response. Okay, so um, please, I encourage you also to raise your virtual hand throughout the session. Type a comment in the chat at any point that you feel like you want to share something. My colleague, Tina Yu, She's a data analyst for the Office of Public-Private Partnerships, P3. She's here, quote unquote, behind the scenes. And if any of you would like to choose close, a closed caption transcript, you could go to the bottom of your screen, click on more, and then you'll see three dots, and then you get to enable live transcription. And also this is gonna be a recorded session. Just a heads up. All right, so let us begin. Okay, so we have a really short agenda today. I'll talk briefly about P3's um, diversity, equity, and inclusion series that we posted um, over the summer and spring. We'll talk a bit about leadership and what this means to you. Uh, we'll talk a bit about workplace engagement, impact, and we'll have a quick Q&A and then wrap up. Oh, I also want to mention that I may refer to the DEI and EEO plan as a diversity plan. So I'm gonna be using those two terms interchangeably, just a heads up, hoping DCAS is okay with this. <laughs> okay, so here we have a quick snapshot of some of the results from our online series from March 24th through July 28th. And many of you have attended more than one of our spring and summer series events focused on educating and, and raising awareness of ageism, then zeroing in on the diversity plan, more specifically recruitment, uh, selection, hiring, learning and development, training, and now workplace. So our events have engaged on average 80 attendees and 40 agencies. And when we started, we made sure that we heard from you with regards to what type of format you most wanted. 
and we heard 87% of you requested a speaker series. That's why we moved into this type of format. And being that our main focus is to inspire our sister agencies to adopt age inclusive strategies, we, we always conducted polls. And the results showed that initially 78% had thought of including age inclusive strategies. And then with the last series, 50% had included age, ageless strategies. So we're really excited. We're moving the, the, the needle, however slow or fast. And we're really, really grateful for all of you that have continued to come to the table to help drive this conversation. And I have a spreadsheet that I keep and I track who joins us. And uh, I wanna give a shout out to uh, many of the agencies that have attended at least two or more events. So the Bronxboro President's Office, the Agency for Veterans, DYCD, NICERS, Queens DA Office, Small Business Services, Equal Employment, Housing Development Corp, Labor Relations, Special Commissioner of Investigations Office, uh, the New York DA's Office, DCAS, DCAS, DCAS always shows up for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, forever grateful. And all of the colleagues here at DIFTA, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules. And we appreciate the support. So we're gonna move on now and conduct a few quick poll surveys, get a quick temperature check before we dive in. And Tina is going to kick off the, the polls. So 80% of those that responded said yes, and only 20% 20, 20 said no to this question. Great. Any thoughts, even? <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. We're, we're moving the needle, as I mentioned. Thank you, everyone. Let's go to the next question. OK. So the second question is, do you feel supported as a leader by your peers at the top? So for this question, 95% said yes, and only 5% said no. That's a huge number. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Good things going on in these other agencies as far as workplace culture. That's so great to hear. Let's okay. launch our third one. Yes, our last question, which is, do you feel your team members or peers are engaged? Okay, so here's the last question launched. And this question could either be uh, how you have moved the process forward with developing the diversity plan or just in general, your team and engaging them in work or other type of activities to create team building. Okay, we have 21 responses. So I'm gonna end the poll right now. Okay. Okay, so 86% said yes, and only 14% said no to this question. Great, great. Thank you, Tina. No problem. And thank you everyone for participating. So we specifically added these couple of poll questions, number two and three, because we're going to be focusing on leadership and engagement and how this shows up tied to workplace culture and the diversity plan. Next slide. Okay, I just want to take a bit of our time to discuss the topic of leadership, which is an extremely important role as we start to implement the list of action items we've listed in our diversity plan to move them from just black and white texts and manifest them to real life action steps. So each of you here are part of the leadership community within a city agency. So this work takes strong, resilient, engaging leaders to 
start a movement or move move an action forward in terms of developing and designing an inclusive inclusive culture. So leadership. Being or demonstrating leadership within a city bureaucracy can be challenging, or maybe not. Based on the poll, it seems as if a lot of you have a lot of support within, and it's so great to hear. So some or most uh, may be working in very supportive environments, as the poll has shown. Your leadership style is appreciated, it's highlighted. Um, being a valued leader and demonstrating inclusive leadership is that's where it's at. This type of leadership helps to bring life to equitable and, and, and age inclusive strategies, um, strategies that are inclusive around gender and race. And the work begins with each of you and with us as a collective. So as that leader, you get to choose how to show up. You get to decide how to make grand or subtle shifts in workplace culture. Although there may be roadblocks personally or professionally, grounding yourself in purpose and opportunity is instrumental in making systems change to move the needle to create a shift in workplace dynamics. So have you as a leader taken the time to think about the type of leader you would like to see in front of you or the type of demonstrated leadership traits you would like to be admired for? I'm gonna leave you with those couple of questions and I want us to watch a quick video together that talks about leadership. And then I'd like to talk about what resonates for you, if anything after the video is over. The people of New South Wales are diverse and we deliver better services when we reflect that diversity. So, this is where we start. Leaders who are inclusive will inspire us and make a difference. Inclusive leaders are curious, collaborative, culturally aware, conscious of bias, committed and courageous. It's easy to say that's who we are and what we're doing, but there's a gap between saying and doing. Small actions every day can close that gap. Try one. Hold yourself to account. Let people know you support diversity. Create goals for diversity and inclusion and keep to them. Ask for feedback and ask yourself, does everyone feel valued and respected or just some? Call it out. Whenever someone says or does something that isn't inclusive, our leaders should be the first to challenge it. Be an agent for change. Speak out. Check yourself, be aware of your biases. Remember, we tend to connect more deeply with people who look and feel like us. Set fair and consistent processes for recruitment decisions and promote them. Be curious. Inclusive leaders show interest in all perspectives. Listen without judgment. Allow people to contribute and speak their voice. Broaden your world. We all work, play, live and love. Recognise how your own culture impacts on your worldview. Talk to people, hear their stories, embrace other cultures, break barriers. Inclusive leaders lead from the middle. Include all your team members in discussions, encourage everyone to share. Be an inclusive leader who inspires, listens and shares. Don't just talk inclusive, act inclusive. Every day. How did that resonate? with everyone. Would anyone mind coming onto the screen to share a thought or to type something in the chat? Hi, this is Sarai, can you hear me? Yes, Sarai. I love Hi. your name, Sarai. Thank you, and that was correct. I heard you sound like you were okay. questioning him, but it was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So I love that video. Um, a lot of it resonated with me, but I think the part that resonated the most was where it said, check yourself, right? There's this part of DEI work that people assume that everyone that's on this track to be more inclusive is always as inclusive as they can be, right? But there's a part of it that requires you to check yourself, to make sure that you're keeping up with language, keeping up with feelings, emotions, 
and the work, right? So that there's a self-assessment that has to happen every so often, kind of like, you know, your engine lights going on and figuring out why. So that was the part that, that kind of stood out to me. Um, and I know one thing that I've struggled with along the way is that um, your intention doesn't always equal the impact that it has. So sometimes, you know, we might intend, have the best of intentions, but we have to kind of acknowledge how what we said or have done or intend to do will affect those um, who will, you know, reap the benefits of the work that we do. So the video was great. It was, and something you said before, the video was about purpose. So that stuck out to me as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sarai. The self-assessment piece. Yes, yes, yes. Starting, just taking a moment to figure out what, or define what kind of leader do each of us want to be? And there are so many great leaders out there that we have a lot of great models to model after, I should say. And, and it's important to take that self-assessment to see where we want to be, how we want to develop, what kind of tools we need to, to add to our backpack. So thank you, Sarai. And we have some things. Okay, Janet says she loved the video so much. She wants to share with leadership for sure, for sure. I'll send you the link. And Chanel, lead from the middle resonates. Yes, I wrote that. I know I jotted that down too. Chanel says, I like to be close enough to all levels so that I have a good spot to get the feedback and connect with different perspectives. It's so important, taking that holistic sort of view. Yes, Chanel. Thank you. Okay, so right now, we'd like to break you all out into rooms. And we have a couple of questions. Tina, if you can pull those up on the screen. So two questions. As an inclusive leader, how has the process been in developing the plan? And number two, please share one or two age inclusive strategies or other strategies you've included in the DEI EEO section four workplace and community, or you can choose to share a strategy that you've added to any other portion of the diversity plan. And Jerry from DCAS reminded me that the plans are due on the 31st. So let's use this opportunity to work together, to exchange ideas, and please choose a rep from your group to report out when we bring you back to the room. So we'll give you five minutes to discuss amongst yourselves, and then we'll come back to the community room and get to exchange ideas. Welcome back, welcome back. Tina, do we have everyone back? Yeah, everyone is back. Okay. Sorry, we got cut off, but y'all got it, right? My group. Oh, <laughs> <We> got it. <laughs> I wish uh, now I'm regretting shortening the session because I originally was thinking an hour and a half. And then I said, oh, we'll wrap it up in one hour, but we're almost out of time. Okay, so we have five, five teams. Would anyone like to share some insights? A rep from a team? I'll, I'll share. Janet. Yeah, <laughs> I was a reluctantly default, uh, default speaker. Okay. <laughs> but um, we had a very lively discussion. I think that the video really spurred our thought process about leading from the middle. And so, um, you know, and, and people were quite frank that sometimes they questioned whether that was something that they were doing to the fullest of their ability. Um, and, um, and we shared like in terms of, and Jersey will, Jersey will appreciate this, um, you know, one of the things, and Solita will appreciate this too, um, 
we're starting with a diversity council to better incorporate stakeholders into the process and to, I think it will hope, the hope is that it will inject DEI considerations into the agency in a more systematic way and it will involve stakeholders. And even though we have tried, like we have, you know, suggestion boxes with anonymity, we have electronic, we have boxes, we have, you know, people, the opportunity for people to share. Um, and my hope is that the, the diversity council by including stakeholders will, will advance that. Um, and um, I, I think that um, as far age inclusive strategies, we, we all agreed that historical knowledge, people who have historical knowledge of the agency and, um, and knowledge of tasks and standards and all that stuff. Um, and those people are so valued. And so we need to do a better job at incorporating them. Um, we also shared that um, we're trying to use silver stars um, for that purpose. So we are trying to leverage, uh, and one last thing that I just wanna say is that I think we all agree that these types of gatherings, because when you talk about your peers, a lot of, uh, you know, when we as peers here get to share um, and learn from each other and support each other, it is tremendously helpful. So I wanna thank you mm -hmm. for making that happen, Yvette, because it really is important. So I think that even, you know, what we what we get from out of these types of um, meetings is uh, ideas and the strength to mm -hmm. keep going and make things better. So you know, I think we all agree that, as somebody just said in the chat, peer sharing is the best because we really learn from each other. Thank you, Janet. Thank you for always showing up too and contributing. I, I appreciate it so much. Well, I try, but I think I have to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to ask you more questions, but I'm already seeing that the, the, the uh, clock is ticking. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Diversity Council, yes, the anonymity, um, the being sort of uh, getting people to engage and knowing that um, to be transparent right? Knowing that there's a safe space is what I'm sort of alluding to based on, on your comment. Diversity Council, make sure it's age inclusive. Because <laughs> we learn from our, from those that have been around longer than us, right? Of course, right? <laughs> yes. And thank you for mentioning Silver Stars. We appreciate the support and anything we can do to, to support that and the implementation of that, we're here. Yeah, if you can give a little plug, cause it's just for your, the pro, tell a little bit about the program, that would be helpful. Well, I am gonna connect you with the right person so that we can keep moving forward. Yeah, we are using it, we're using it. Okay, okay. awesome. Anyone else, please come onto the screen, type in the chat, some insights shared within your groups. How has the process been in developing the diversity plan? And please share some age inclusive strategies or other strategies you've included within the diversity plan. We're here to learn from one another and be inspired. We still have a couple of days. We can add some more things, some very important work to the diversity plans. Do we have anyone who's raising their hand? I can, this is Lydia Appel from the New York City Housing Development Corporation. Um, and our group, we, we, we're all, I think the consensus is that we're, we've all learned so much from these series and these series have added perspectives that we may not have immediately thought of. And so, now that we've had these discussions, as we're going into plan building, we have it at the top of our mind. So it's more incentive to like think about um, age inclusivity. 
So we have one team that's in the process of uh, building out more ERGs and thinking about what that could look like. Um, a few of us in different are in different stages of building DEI councils and making sure that the DEI councils are also, you know, uh, aware of age inclusive um, strategies and things we should be talking about and thinking about, especially as some of us have um, organizations where like HDC, for example, we have a long tenured uh, group. We have folks that have been with us for over 20, 30 years. We have some of those folks are starting to retire. Um, and we have quite a good range there. People that tend to come to HDC tend to stay and we want to keep that. So um, thinking about those uh, characteristics and thinking about those unique aspects as we go through all of this, I think we all have that in common. So anyone from the group, if you want to jump in, if I missed anything, but that's kind of where we were. I don't think we had enough time to go over specific strategies, um, but that's kind of where we left off. Awesome. Thank you, Lydia, so much for participating. Yes, and you mentioned ERG. And that's a piece of the presentation that I'd like us to focus on. So being that we're close to the end of our session, I'd like to move forward. And we're always here at the Office of Public-Private Partnerships to continue this conversation around leadership or any other topics you'd like to discuss. But for, for now, we're gonna move on. Yeah, well, and I'd like to talk about a workplace engagement strategy focused on employee resource groups, ERGs. We all know what they are, but a official definition is that it's a volunteer employee-led group that forces inclusivity and builds community. Why are they important? Because most ERGs, they, share, uh, they have a shared purpose. We get to bond and feel supportive and create those safe spaces that we may not otherwise have. And just a bit of trivia that I found, um, ERGs were created or started by a former Xerox CEO by the name of Joseph Wilson back in the 60s. And this was a result, this was a response to racial tension. So the very first group to launch was a National Black Employees Caucus. And they addressed workplace discrimination. So it's been a, a very successful strategy within companies to develop ERGs, help employees feel a sense of equity and belonging in the workplace. Next slide. And here are some of the benefits. We, support, we get to support and, and empower each other. We get to accelerate the multi-generational connections within the workplace increase cultural competency, assist with diverse recruiting, and we get to represent the ERG at external events, which includes representing the agency that you're at and then the submission of the ERG, which should always be tied to the overall agency mission. And in starting an ERG, we wanna make sure that you go down a certain checklist. So we want to make sure that there's organizational readiness. So gain that buy-in from the top, gauge employees' interests, understand why they may feel it's important to start an ERG. What are the challenges that employees confront that an ERG can support and help navigate within the agency? Think about how, do you, how are you going to get employees to participate and maintain that momentum, maintain that engagement. You also want to define what the diversity, equity, and inclusion strategies are going to be for employees so that they, there's an alignment there. Of course, developing a name, a focus, a mission statement. When you think about the goals, what specifically 
does the ERG intend to do? And what do you hope that it accomplishes? What kind of impact? Membership, age inclusivity, all the way, gender inclusivity, race inclusivity, make sure that it's fully inclusive and open to all. Assign and nominate team roles. And it may be an opportunity to get some funding. I was with a different city agency and $5,000 was allocated for our, our ERG. And we used that money to host different fundraising events. We raised money, for example, for uh, Hurricane Katrina victims. Um, Hurricane Maria victims. We, we did things like planting trees in different neighborhoods. We were able to obtain some swag um, and give those out at events. So there may be some allocation within your agency, within the HR department or the diversity and inclusion office where there's a little pot of money to support events or our activities. And have any of you here thought about starting an ERG? I know it's volunteer led, so sometimes we shy away from that because we have so many things that are on our plates during our, our typical nine to five uh, sort of roles and responsibilities that we, we carry. But if you ever thought about starting an ERG, what would the focus be? And if you are part of an existing ERG, please share some thoughts, your experience, some sort of key insights to keeping the momentum, keeping others engaged. And I invite you all again to either come onto the screen or type in the chat. So Cecilia, she typed in the chat, uh, creating awareness by inviting speakers to present to staff about age inclusivity. Here we are, P3, uh, <laughs> leadership training, uh, leveraging talent in the multi-generational workforce. Cecilia, please. Yes, I'm glad you said that. We'll hold you to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, you know, again, been, been excited. And we um, really um, tried this, this year to take to heart the, the, the importance of being as inclusive as possible in the process of developing the plan. So we really, you know, reached out across the agency, you know, just, you know, it's also a brag time too, you know, to take stock of all the great things you're doing while also acknowledging, you know, areas where there could be more work, but we, you know, need more opportunity. So, um, you know, a couple, you know, the agent inclusivity, we, we talked about um, proposing in our plan to, and again, connect with our partners. You know, these sessions have been so enriching and just, just eye-opening and looking at our workforce demographics and understanding that, you know, as a nation, you know, for the first time, we have so many generations in the workplace and, you know, just looking around and, and, and understanding what that means to the organization and how we can, you know, do the best to make everybody's experience, you know, as, as positive as possible. So those are two um, strategies that you know we're including, you know many more, but uh, just on that particular um, topic. And then going back to your uh, ERGs, we have quite a few very active ERGs, and um, we have a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee that just you know does a lot. We have a women's committee, and those two in particular, you know, are really you know great starting points to kind of um, you be able to you know incorporate some of this age inclusion focus as well. So we're looking forward to doing that, you know, raising it as a topic, you know, the committees tend to have subcommittees and work on particular areas. So this year we're proposing that those committees, you know, now start to, you know, branch out and be a little broader in terms of looking at age inclusion amongst our, our workforce. Oh, I am excited, Cecilia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we need to keep in touch. Absolutely. <laughs> I wanna hear how things are moving forward and, like I said, we're here to support. So please pull us in. Thank you. And some other comments in the chat. So Jerry says, curiously, no city agency has an age-related ERG. Aha, uh -huh. an opportunity, perhaps time to encourage one. Yes, thank you, Jerry. Thank you so much. Eric talks about a religious ERG where we all learn about another's 
one another's religion. Wow, that's a great idea. Would never have crossed my mind. As sensitive a topic as this is, I feel it causes the biggest disconnects. Yes, yes, yes. And creating that safe space within an ERG is also oh important. And Eric, if you move that forward, I would love to hear about it. Please stay in contact. I've, I've tried. I've tried on so many different occasions, Yvette. And I'm sorry, I'm not like available. I'm just working simultaneously. But um, yeah, I've tried on so many occasions. It's just such, it's such a sensitive topic that most people are willing are not willing to touch it. Um, you know, because it can cause so much uh, you know conflict within the agency. But um, I also see that most of us don't connect with each other because of these religious um you know our, our you know our practices or whatever you know maybe they're not maybe they uh, like for instance um i know certain uh women of muslim faith can't really interact with men to a certain degree right and you may think as a male working with her that she's obnoxious or rude or disrespectful but you just don't know that hey her religion just says she just can't do this 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 or that you know i mean that have anything to do with you so i just think those small things um cause disconnects and, and they need to be discussed yes so agreed to gain that control, cultural competency to encourage in, inclusivity oh so important and also when we're aware that one is operating under a certain belief system that brings understanding and compassion yes exactly exactly so eric we we can talk offline I may not have all the solutions, but help. I think help. A brainstorming session is always worth it. For sure, for sure. Okay, thank you for sharing. And oh, it's it's two fifty seven. Um, so, Tina, will you go to the next slide, please? You know, Eric, you mentioned something about supporting one one another and to create the greatest impact, it takes a collective. So I wanna encourage each and every one of you, those that have mentioned diversity councils, ERG, please connect with a sister agency, hold each other accountable. How can you bond and think about cross collaborative strategies to make a greater impact. We know that each agency is focused on a specific goal, a specific mission, but there's always alignment. We can always find alignment. And in holding each other accountable, we get to not say, oh, I'm too busy for the ER to, to get onto the diversity council. I'm too busy to, to take part in the ERG right now. No, make the commitment and maintain the commitment use each other as support. And in the end, it's really about making the greatest impact possible. So I know what we're down to, to one minute, but I just want to sort of wrap up by saying this work is about us. It begins inside with self-reflections, as we mentioned earlier. Self-work is the first step. So let's not only talk the talk, Let's walk the walk to inspire and, and encourage one another. You know, this old sort of cliche, when, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Well, don't get going. Remind yourselves that you're here on this leg of your journey for a purpose. And part of that purpose is to use your voice, your passion and inclusive nature to shift a culture that supports diversity, equity and inclusion. As I mentioned, P3 is here. We're all about partnerships, so please reach out and we'd love, we'd love to hear from you, how you're doing, how you're moving the work forward. And we'd love to hear about some other type of event, some other type of, of topic focus that you'd like us, us to bring to the table. Please let us know. All right, everyone, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you again. Thank you again for participating. Thank you for supporting. And I look forward to, to staying in contact. And there's a, a, a typo on this. Um, there shouldn't be a hyphen between public and private. So, but you all have my email address from the invite. 
So enjoy the rest of the summer. We have a couple of days to submit those plans. Please do. We're here to help and I hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.